I'm not sure I preach enough for Matthew 24, Matthew 25. It's like reading today's newspaper, like watching the news on television. And I guess that's the reason a lot of folks dodge Matthew 24 and 25 because it brings us up to the present time. Now I want to read to you tonight verse 37 through verse 39 in Matthew chapter 24. But as the days of Noah were, the preacher that's over 2,000 years ago. I know it is. But if we ought to learn anything, we ought to learn from examples of things that's happened in the past. That's the reason God gave it to us. As an example to remind us of things that happened in the past. But the Bible says, as it, uh, but as the days of Noah were, so also, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Now that brings it up to date. It's not just Noah's time 2,000 years ago or over 2,000 years ago. Now it's right on our doorstep because Jesus is coming soon, real soon. And it tells us that the same thing's going to be going on this day and time as it was in the days of Noah when the flood came. All right, verse 38. For for as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered the ark, and knew not until the flood came and took them all away, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Those three verses. It looks like to me that as wise as we claim to be, all we have to do is look back at a little history that reminds us of the results of sin and the results of things that's going to happen because of sin. Amen. Now, Noah... You read about him in Genesis chapter 6, by the way. And uh, Noah was told by God to build an ark. That's nothing but a great big boat. Uh, I heard a real sharp uh, Bible professor say, there's no way that Noah could have lined up all the animals and got him to come into the ark. Now he said that to make fun of the Bible. Well, no, he didn't do it. I agree with him. God did it. God lined them up. He's the one that made them, and the Lord just said to the big old lions, come here, kitty. And they just lined up. Amen. And went on the ark. It doesn't take a real rocket scientist to figure out that God was still in control in Noah's time. He told Noah it was going to rain and Noah believed God. Out of all the people on the earth, Genesis chapter 6 tells us that Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. And Noah obeyed the Lord in building that ark. Every time he struck the board with a wooden peg it sounded out that rain is coming nobody believed Noah he was a laughing stock of his day if there had been a CNN news reporter around he'd have run to Noah and tried to make fun of Noah amen They were interviewing on CNN. I don't know where you caught it or not, but they were interviewing a homosexual. Does that word scare you? Well, you ought to get used to it because it's going to be thrown around everywhere in this old world until Jesus comes. His partner had died of AIDS. 
and CNN news reporter was interviewing him and uh, he said, do you miss your partner? And he said, I talk to him every night. And here's what the reporter said. Next time you talk to him, would you tell him that I'm real proud of him for taking the stand that he did? Now you think about that. That's a news reporter on CNN broadcast nationwide. I've said this a hundred times and I'll say it again. We're in trouble in this country. You say, when our preacher was that prevalent in Don't Noah's day? Absolutely. Read Genesis chapter 6 and verse 5. The Bible said God looked down upon man and saw that every man's imagination and heart was evil continually. That means they were coming up with everything in the world just like they're doing this day and time. The days of Noah. Number one, there were strange things going on in Noah's day. Strange things. I never dreamed that I would live in a day and time when I'm seeing as much strange stuff as I'm seeing this day and time. Amen. You say, well, preacher, I came for a baby dedication. We'll have that in a little while, but just fasten your seatbelts. We're seeing strange things going strange to me anyway. And it ought to be strange to you. You say, well, preacher, that's just the day and time. No, that's just an excuse. God's still looking down from heaven and God's still seeing the thoughts of man and God's still seeing the hearts of man. God knows what's going on. It may be strange to you and me, but God's watching every bit of it. As it was in the days of Noah, strange things going on. They were eating and drinking, the Bible said. I just read it to you. Now, that don't, that don't mean eating and drinking like you and I do. But it means they were eating and drinking to excess. Yes. Only one country leads America in the consumption of beer. You know what country that would be? Germany, that's right, who said Germany? Germany leads and America is second. We're drowning ourselves in alcohol. In the paper just this past week, in the uh, state of Kentucky, they're building more warehouses in order to put Kentucky liquor on the inside of the warehouses so they can age for a while. They say the consumption of Kentucky bourbon has gone out the roof. They can't keep up with the demand that's going on in this country. I was raised in the mountains where they didn't care nothing about Kentucky bourbon. They made moonshine. Amen, they did. And some of them still do. If you want some, you can see me after service. I'm kidding. I hope you know I'm kidding. But I was in a, I was in a home a little while back of a prominent church member in Virginia. And I was sick as a dog. Y'all remember when I was up there? I had that sinus infection. And he said, Preacher, I got some stuff in yonder in the freezer that'll cure it. I said, You do? And then I suddenly caught on to what he was saying. What kind of medicine you keep in the freezer that don't freeze other than pure alcohol? Amen. And uh, I said, I believe I'll pass. I'm in revival. <laughs> good time to pass right but uh, he don't know what I was thinking I wouldn't mind taking a little bit home no I wasn't thinking that look at my wife I'm kidding honey you've been married to me 53 years you ought to know amen but we're drowning ourselves in alcohol but you don't hear much about it you know why 
because that crowd in Washington don't want to do anything about it. It's bringing in dollars and they're participating in it. That's why. Amen. As it was in the days of Noah, they were eating and drinking. And they also says that they were marrying and giving in marriage. That means they were changing partners every time you turn around. One little boy in Hollywood said to another little boy as they were playing out in the yard, who's your daddy this week? Now you think about that. That's sad that it's going on this day and time. And it's crept into the churches. Amen. It used to be a thing that you heard of on the outside of the church. If you don't like your wife and don't like your husband, just do away with them. Get somebody else. Eating and drinking. Strange things going on in Noah's day and time. But there's a second thing that was going on. Structure was changing. When the waters came, it was going to change the structure of everything. Am I right? And structure is changing this day and time. I mean, all around us, things are changing. I know that we're living in a changing time, but there are some things that God did not expect for us to let change. And one of them is a good old-fashioned Christian home. But the structure of the home is changing. Amen. Structure of the church is changing. It's hard to get folks to come to church to worship the Lord and hear good old-fashioned Bible preaching and good old-fashioned southern gospel singing, but you let us have a movie and folks will pile in. Or better yet, let's have an eating meeting. Hot dogs, yeah, hot dogs will bring them in. Amen, anything will bring them in other than good old-fashioned worship. But you know that's exactly what God wants us to do. We don't come to church on special occasions and we don't come to church just to get what we come to church to worship God. And have him to deal with our heart and speak to our hearts. Amen. Church in Tennessee, honestly, this is the honest truth. Church in Tennessee advertised their church like this. Come to our church Sunday. You'll enjoy our services. And when you leave our church, you won't even feel like you've been in church. That's their advertisement on the radio. I thought, why go? Amen. Why even make the effort to go if you don't feel like you've been in church? Y'all getting what I'm saying? I'm trying to hurry. We got a half a dozen babies to dedicate here in a minute. Strange things going on. Structure was changing. Stability was about to end. The flood swept away everything. God said every living thing except Noah and his wife his sons and their wives, safe on the inside of the ark. Everybody else and everything else in this whole earth perished. Stability was gone. They thought they were safe. They were like the folks I read about in Isaiah 28 this morning. Well, we've made an agreement with hell. And we're not afraid of death. It's not going to come to us, but it did come to them. And stability is about gone in this country of ours too. My wife and I look forward to the day that we could retire. <laughs> and a lot of you folks here sitting here tonight know what I'm talking about. You can't retire and live comfortably on Social Security. It's not as stable as that used to be. Amen. And it's going to be less stable in the future 
when all of these gays start, somebody's going to have to pay for it. It's going to be you and me. Amen. Stability is gone. You'd have had to have your head stuck in the sand if you hadn't noticed what was going on in the country of Greece. They're so far in debt they can't even pay their bills. And it just, you say, well, that's Greece. No, it's going to affect every country around Greece and it's going to affect our country as well. Look at the stock market. How it's gone down. Well, preacher, I don't have any stock. No, but it's going to filter on down to you whether you have any stocks or not. No stability. What's all that a sign of, preacher? One thing. Verse 37 says, the coming of the Son of Man. Verse 39 says, the coming of the Son of Man. There may be strange things going on and structure might be changing and there might not be no stability, but I do know this, the second coming is coming quickly. It's nigh, even at the door. Jesus is coming quickly and coming soon. Hey, it'll be all right with me if he decides to step out on the clouds tonight and call us home. I'm ready. Are you? Amen. Let's stand with their heads bowed.